Good morning, everybody, um, and thank you so much uh, for uh, for joining us uh, for this virtual meeting. We live in really live in strange times, and uh, uh, and I think you know that's why I think this is an, such an appropriate uh, theme is returning to rabies. You know, uh, obviously everybody, everybody suddenly is an infectious disease specialist and everybody is a virologist and, and so on. And I think that's really good. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try and tell you why I think that. Uh, so if we, for example, go back to the, to the critical question and we say, yes, the world is challenged by many diseases. Uh, the COVID-19 is uh, the latest example of a very severe challenge. And so it brings us, every time brings us back to the question, so how important is rabies? And so you can go two ways. You can go, well, it's not really important. It only kills about 60,000 people and about 3 million animals every year. They are the more important diseases. Or you can go, the way we go and we say, well, actually, it is a very important disease. Um, and the case for this has been obviously made um, over and over. And if we look at, you know, just and I'm not going to go through this, but if we go look at the global strategic plan, uh, there are many reasons given in this plan why investment in rabies is so important. Obviously, because of the case fatality ratio, obviously, because it can be prevented and it historically has been shown, and obviously, because it makes economic sense and so forth. But I'm not going to go into that because that will be preaching to the converted. I think you all know these arguments, uh, although it's very good to every now and again revisit it. But instead, what I thought I'll do is talk about COVID. Uh, 19 since this is um, this is has been on our minds for the past year or more but what I would like to do is to discuss with you how I think the COVID pandemic actually enhances the importance of rabies and how this pandemic strengthens the case for the elimination of rabies and I, I'm going to give you six examples why uh, why I think this is an opportunity in each of these cases. So firstly One Health. So as I say suddenly the world is full of infectious disease specialists. I listen to people uh, talking about mutations and selections and quasi species and things like that is absolutely fantastic. And so I think suddenly the world is in a much better place to understand this critical link between animal and human health. Something that we've tried to advocate over and over. And we know uh, because rabies is the model one health disease. And to, to eliminate this disease in humans, you have to address the exact same disease in animals, not another version of the, the exact same disease. And of course, environment comes into play. If we look at population expo um, explosions, population management, um, garbage control, that sort of thing. So it is a model one health disease and no other disease illustrate the need for and also the value of a one health approach um, as much as rabies. So it does strengthen our case and our message, I think, is easier to understand um, a globe to, a, to a global population. Secondly, education and communication. So, so COVID highlighted the critical importance of educating people. So all ages across all demographies, all levels of society, everybody had to understand uh, what's going on, what needs to be done. And so my argument is that the rape... It seems that um, we may have lost sound for a few minutes. Uh, uh, so what I was saying is that, uh, you know, I think um, the, uh, the COVID pandemic highlighted the importance of education because we needed to let everybody in the world know what's going on. And by that, I mean people of all ages, uh, and from all levels of society uh, and, and democracies. And, and my argument is that um, collectively in the rabies world, we have for many decades developed very advanced models of educational initiatives 
and platforms that are directed to to the most vulnerable people. So, and I think there's a renewed global interest and should be uh, in these approaches. And I think that's where the opportunity lies. And uh, again, I, I just think that um, uh, this can be can can be demonstrated in the numbers because last year we thought well World Rabies Day um, may have you know may have suffered severely because of the of the pandemic but the opposite was true in fact it was the the most uh, uh, active World Rabies Day ever uh, more people voted in the awards section uh, for World Rabies Day than ever before um, so 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 clearly there's an uh, I can also to say for the educational activities um, there was a very real growth in the certificate courses um, and and expansion into into new countries around the world so we've got uh, graduates from 124 different countries now so so these are opportunities so the third thing for me lies in surveillance uh, and I think that the that the pandemic they really demonstrated to everybody. Everybody now understands the, the issue of testing, how important it is to test. So the importance of diagnosis and what it means and the transparency of this data. So this is an opportunity. I think most people now better understand good surveillance, what good surveillance is and what, how good surveillance is important because good surveillance, you need it to understand the disease and the burden of the disease. You need it to design your intervention uh, and a strategic intervention that's based on actual data. And then of course you need it to determine whether it works, the success or the failure of your strategy. So these are key arguments been trying to make for years now and then we say that there's a global inadequacy of the surveillance of rabies and I think this is an opportunity to better make our case. Uh, I think it's better understood um, and also uh, on a governmental level. And and one example that we, that Terence will be talking about later on, most of you know uh, the growth of the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, which is exactly that, a transparent system to continually measure the dynamic metrics of rabies in all of the world, uh, the dog rabies endemic world, in a transparent manner so that that can be shared. The fourth one relies around strategy. And if we look at strategy, so globally, we need a shared vision and a connected and a universal strategy. So countries following the same sort of strategy region by region. This was essential. I mean, we need this with such a strategy, such a vision, such a connectedness is and was essential to effectively combat something like, um, like COVID. This is a lesson. We can say the global response has been quite imperfect in many ways, spectacularly in, 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 in many ways, and I think this is an opportunity. So we already have uh, an existing zero by 30 global strategic plan, and I think we will benefit from a new appreciation of this plan because the plan is a shared vision and it, uh, it, the plan is for a connected and a universal strategy. And so among others, obviously the stepwise approach to rabies elimination is a cornerstone uh, of this plan. And I think this can now be accelerated globally. There's an opportunity. So, so the pandemic helps us in these ways. Vaccines. So we know vaccine hesitancy is a big problem. It's a scourge, it's unexpected. It's kind of a new thing, um, but uh, we can also say that the race for the COVID-19 vaccines was absolutely unprecedented. And I think also it also addresses the whole issue of vaccine hesitancy on a, uh, I know there's still these mad people out there with, you know, marks of Lucifer and so forth, but generally there's a much better appreciation of vaccine and the value of vaccines. And then I think the development and the rollout of these COVID vaccines is the most critical breakthrough uh, against the coronavirus. That's how we're going to end the pandemic um, ultimately and, and for our world to return to normal. And then we can say, but hang on, 
We've had these very good rabies vaccines for ages. One of the first vaccines, and, and that it brings us back to the Pasteur era, and I think there should be a renewed appreciation of the value and the importance of vaccination. And so this for, for animals and, and humans. So again, an opportunity. And then I um, use this as the final example where um, each and every country is in charge of its own destiny. Now, you know, with um, so with the COVID-19 pandemic, nobody is helping anybody. Every country had to do their own thing, essentially. Every country, each and every nation, had to take full responsibility for its interventions. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Yes, try and learn from each other and so forth. But each country, it was clear, each country had to take their own steps to protect their own citizens. And we also know that those countries were the, with, with decisive leadership were the most successful to, uh, in doing so. And this, I think, validates our point, and namely that if we ever want to eliminate rabies, it should be country-centric, it should be driven by the individual national governments per se. So governments need to take the responsibility just um, as was demonstrated in the case of, of COVID-19, that there is no other way. Just like that, um, it should be country-centric and a nation should take their own responsibility if uh, we hope to ever um, eliminate uh, rabies uh, by 2030. So that's this is my final slide. Just to so these are the crit critical tools, uh, national strategies, surveillance tools, education and training, awareness and advocacy, and these are then things that will be discussed um, in the rest of the meeting. And with that, um, I am going to conclude, uh, and I wish you a wonderful meeting. Thank you very much for joining.